Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation, a really good one. We have 16 to the power x plus 4 to the power x plus 1 all over 4 to the x plus 2 to the x plus 1, and that is equal to 8 to the power x plus 1 divided by 65. And we're going to be solving for x values. What else could you solve for, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. Obviously, you're probably thinking about uh, cross multiplication. But before we do that, there is something that will help you a great deal. And that is called, did you know that word? Starts with S. Yes, it's substitution. So we're going to go ahead and pick the lowest base. In this case, it's 2. So we're going to go ahead and call 2 to the power x something. Okay? So let's go ahead and set this equal to y. 2 to the power x equals y. And then... Let's evaluate everything in terms of y, okay? For example, 4 to the power x is, as you know, 4 is 2 squared, so we can write this as y squared. Hopefully, you know how to do that. And then 8 to the power x is y cubed because 8 is 2 to the third power, right? And then 16 to the power x should be y to the fourth. Uh-oh, we do get a lot of powers, right? Let's go ahead and replace them with what they are. Start with this, 16 to the power x. You're going to get y to the fourth, and then you'll have a y squared plus 1 divided by y squared plus y plus 1, and that is equal to y cubed plus 1 divided by 65. Where does that number come from, right? Okay, now, let's go ahead and cross multiply and turn this into something super messy, shall we? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first, this. If you distribute this one over that, y to the fifth plus y to the fourth plus y cubed, and then you're going to distribute the one, and that is equal to 65 times this, which is 65y to the fourth plus 65y to the second plus 65. Great. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. We have y to the fifth, and then we have 65 minus 1, or 1 minus 65, that's minus 64y to the fourth power, which is more meaningful than 65, right? And then we have the y cubed, which is the only one. And then y squared minus 65, y squared is going to be minus 64y squared. Again, 64 comes up. And then we have the y by itself, and 1 minus 65 is minus 64 again. Okay, great. <laughs> well, it doesn't look very great, but hopefully we can turn it into something meaningful, right? So here's the next thing. Since it's a quintic and there is no quintic formula, yes, I know some people are going to say, oh, we can use Bring Radical, we can use Gerard, whatever. You know what? There's no quintic formula. Too bad. Get used to it and just live with it. So we need to look for a way to factor this. And you don't have to look far. Look at this. If you group the terms which is amazing, right? You will get a way to factor it. For example, this one, y to the fourth times y minus 64. That's why 64s are very important here. Factor out y squared, you get y minus 64, and then plus one, y minus 64. Awesome. And this is equal to zero. Obviously, you're gonna get y to the fourth plus y squared plus one, all multiplied by y minus 64, equals zero. Yay. Now, what does this mean? This means that each factor can be zero. So if this is zero, you know it, right? That should be the easiest one. Y equals 64. And since we also know that Y is two to the power X, we can go ahead and set this equal to two to the power X. And this implies because 64 is two to the sixth power, X equals six. Awesome. So six is a solution. Do you want to check that? Sure. Go ahead and plug it in. You're going to have to deal with large numbers, but in the end, it should work out. Okay. What about the other one? Well, the other one isn't that easy. Y to the fourth plus Y squared plus one equals zero. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. And that's a huge problem. That's a very complex problem. You know why? Because if you try to solve this equation, let's say you set Y squared equal to T. Okay. Then you know what? I'm going to use z actually because z has a meaning. Set y squared equal to z. And you'll get z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. You should know this 
if you are already following A plus B I. If not, go ahead and check it out. You should follow it, right? Okay, so that's a channel that focuses on complex numbers. So make sure to check it out and let us know what you think. So what does that mean though? z squared plus z plus one equals, if you look at the discriminant, you're gonna realize it's less than zero, which means no real solutions, too bad. Does that mean there are complex solutions? Well, all solutions are complex in the broader sense. Uh, in other words, this equation can only be satisfied by complex numbers that are not real. What does that mean? It means that they have an imaginary part. That's why I have this channel, which is a plus b i, but it's, it's written like that because YouTube doesn't allow the plus sign to be used for you YouTube handles, which is sad, but what can you do, right? At least you can kind of spell it out. And that's what I did, A plus B I. Anyways, so if you solve this equation using the quadratic formula, whatever method, you're gonna realize the following. This is gonna be negative B plus minus the square root of B squared one minus four, which is negative three. And uh-oh, Houston, we have another problem. You cannot square root negative three because, not because three is not a perfect square, but any real number squared cannot be negative. No square is negative in the real world. So this can be written as negative one plus minus square root of three multiplied by i divided by two, and i is the square root of negative one, or i squared can be written as negative one. For more details, check out a plus bi. I also made a bunch of lecture videos that go over the basics of complex numbers. Okay, so those are not real solutions. What is that supposed to mean? If Z is not real, Y is not gonna be real either because basically to solve for Y, you're gonna have to look at the square roots of Z and the square roots of this number, they're not gonna be real. How do we know that? We do, for some reason, right? I mean, you can check it out. So the only solution we end up with, the only, only solution we end up with is X equals six. That's so unique, right? But guess what? I'm gonna show you an alternative method. Of course, we're not gonna end here. I'm in favor of multiple methods, right? And it also helps the algorithm. And your comments help a lot for the algorithm. So make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and let us know what you think, okay? I'm not saying all the time positive because it could, you could have a negative comment too, but don't make it too negative because too negative may uh, you know, get negative attention from YouTube and me as well. Anyways, so here's our equation. And actually, I should probably write the other version. Sorry about that. But if you just, you know how to convert it. y to the fourth plus y squared plus one divided by y squared plus y plus one equals y cubed plus one divided by six to five. Now, here's the trick for this kind of problem. Not all the time, but for this particular one. This is factorable. Did you know that? Probably not, right? But if you dealt with fourth powers, that's why algebra is so important. That's why this channel focuses mainly on algebra, trigonometry, and number theory, right? Geometry is very little. I'm sorry about that because that's not my strength. Plus, that's not my favorite topic. Anyways, uh, one day, I don't know which day, but maybe one day, I'll make a video on geometry, okay? I promise. But I can't tell you which Monday or which week is that, that's going to be, but anytime soon, okay? So how is this factorable? Fourth powers are very special because here's what you can do. You can actually add y squared to both sides and subtract it. And you might be asking like, why are you doing it? Well, why and why? It's just kind of like play on the uh, names. But the idea is if you add the y squared, the additional one, you get a perfect square. And if you subtract it to make up for the extra y squared that you added, you get another perfect square and together, they're called a difference of two squares, which is perfect, right? By the way, on my channel, I activated the YouTube membership. So go ahead and click the join button. If you'd like to support the channel, there are different levels and you get perks for each level. So thank you for your support in advance. So go ahead and check it out. Now, this is y squared plus one quantity squared minus y squared, okay? So what does that mean? Difference of two squares, awesome. So we can kind of write it like this, you know, a squared minus b squared. Hopefully you know that formula because that's one of the most important things. But we can make things a little better by writing these polynomials in standard form, ta-da, yes. Why is that important? Because if you plug it in, you're gonna see something amazing. So let me go ahead and replace the y to the fourth plus y squared plus one with this. 
And in the denominator, if you remember, did you forget? We had y squared plus y plus 1, which is awesome. And here we had y cubed plus 1 divided by 65. Now take a look at this. Ta-da! Those cancel out. And we end up with something like this, but that's not the whole story. This is also factorable. Wow, beautiful. But let's go ahead and distribute it first or cross multiply. We get this, and then we can go ahead and factor this because you see algebra, a lot of algebra, I love this. This is a sum of two cubes from the formula. This becomes y plus one times y squared minus y plus one. By the way, whoever wrote this problem, I think it's from Russia, if I'm not mistaken, it's a beautiful problem. I could be wrong though. It could also be from Turkey, Romania, uh, China, who knows, uh, Russia, any other country, but those are the most common ones that I kind of pull problems from. I have plenty of books uh, and a friend of mine just let me borrow one of his books, uh, which is in Turkish. Beautiful, beautiful problems. By the way, he's a public school teacher and I just want to thank him from this video. Thank you. All right, so notice that we get a common factor. So should we just cancel it out? Be careful, that could be dangerous. But in this case, it's not because this can never be zero again negative discriminant, uh, no real solutions, cross them out, ta-da-da-da, -da -da, you end up with super duper <laughs> helpful, like easiest linear equation, y equals 64. You see how nice that is? If you do a little bit of factoring, you should. And what is y? It is two to the power x, and as you know, 64 is two to the sixth power. Therefore, as a result, x equals six, because that's what's supposed to happen right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI, Cyber Math, and bye-bye.